Manila, a new world in what was once the island jungle of the Philippines. Named for King Philip of Spain in 1521, the new republic has 24 million people, two and a half million in Manila. Mostly Christian, they are fun-loving, optimistic, loyal, sentimental, and socially gracious. The destruction of Manila in World War II led to a far greater city. Now the bustling metropolis hums with the vibrating tempo of progress. One reason, some visitors say, is the oriental melting pot here, the mixing of ingenuity and ambition. There's an example of real enterprise. Filipinos with aspirations to get somewhere turned their war surplus jeeps into what they call jeepneys, so everybody can get somewhere. The Filipinos need few reminders of the past. The future is their concern as they push the ruins aside to make way for a brand new country. You're not here long before you believe in the miracle of Manila, for it was almost completely leveled by war. Today, it is a show window of democracy, for freedom is a hallowed tradition among the leaders of the Philippines. A fascinating side trip is to nearby Baguio, where the National Military Academy trains leaders to help guard their newly founded republic. A territory of the United States for nearly 50 years, the Philippines Academy is fashioned after America's West Point. Another excursion off the beaten path is a visit to Zamboanga, an old town of Muslim influence where a 17th century Spanish outpost was occupied by the Americans in 1899. Mohammedanism, which was brought here by Arab missionaries in the 14th century, is still predominant, all of which produces a rare setting for a traveler from the New World. The scene at sea is also unique as they sail the gentle waters and bright colored vintas. The Muslim people here are like other Filipinos. Theirs is a different culture. Natural born divers, they can harvest a bountiful crop of shells and coral for their handicrafts. Diving 70 feet or more, exploring the finest oyster beds in the Pacific. Formerly notorious for pirating in the Sulu and China seas, their fondness for artistic and colorful things led them to skills with precious metals and stones. Once one of the most warlike people in the world, they never came to terms with any of the occupying nations. In other parts of the islands, you'll delight in watching this folk dance called the tinnacling, named for a long-legged grain-stealing bird who dances about to avoid the farmer's trap. It's a combination dance and sport to keep your toes from getting smacked by the clacking bamboo poles. <laughs> 